Tomorrow night at Point Loma Nazarene University, a panel of journalists will discuss how traditional reporting is being influenced by non-traditional sources and the rise of clickbait journalism. Joining me are two of the panelists, Kevin Brass, New York Times columnist, feature writer, and former media reporter for the LA Times, San Diego Magazine, and Irene McCormick, a crisis communication specialist and the first person to talk publicly about sexual harassment by former mayor Bob Filner. And Kevin, what are some examples of celebrity culture influencing journalism, or I should say infiltrating journalism? Well, it starts on a basic level. I mean, at a certain point in a newsroom, Caitlyn Jenner becomes more important news than the war in the Ukraine. There's a basic decision process that gets made about what's news and what's not. And more and more, that celebrity, that name, gets uh, gets in that newscast more than it was in the past. How does pop culture, so speaking of which, or tabloid-style news, then actually hurt journalism? There's the omission part, or are there other ways? Well, on one, on a, on a very basic level, it does compete on a very basic level for the attention and the eyeballs of people who are the news consumers, and the traditional media has to compete with that. How do they do that? How do they attract people while still sticking to their basic traditions and concepts of what we would consider solid journalism? That gets skewed very quickly. That makes me think about ethics. How do the ethics of, let's say, TMZ differ from the ethics of the Wall Street Journal? Tremendously. They don't have the same uh, basic uh, discussion that you would have in a traditional newsroom. TMZ is all about getting that video, getting that sound bite that's going to grab the headline. It's all about grabbing that headline. So they're going to create a news story or something that has a great headline. And if they don't have it, they're going to find it. They're going to come up with something that's going to get that, that attention. Now, Irene, you've been on both sides of the media, first as a reporter and then at the center of the media frenzy that surrounded uh, Filner's mm -hmm. sexual harassment story. How did the media hound you during that time? You know, because I knew the media pretty well, traditional media pretty well, I was able to kind of see what was going to come and uh, help myself in some ways by surrounding myself with people who could um, tell me what was going to happen. But I knew that once I went public, and actually experiencing it is quite different than knowing it, uh, that I was going to be the focus of a lot of people's attention. So I did certain things. You know, I didn't bring, put my trash out on my in front of my house until I knew the garbage men were going to be there. I didn't want anybody digging through my trash. I tried to protect my family because I knew some of the media would go after my family. Um, but I had no clue how intense it was going to be, how stressful it was going to be, and what it would do to my psyche, actually. And, and what do you think, well, you were saying some of the coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. but it took you a little while to recover then from that. Oh, yeah, it did. It was, you know, when you're a journalist, often you're an observer and you're not in the middle of the news. You're not the news story. You don't see yourself on Conan O'Brien or Jon Stewart. You don't see your picture juxtaposed with the person that you came out against, you know? So it's very different when you go to the grocery store and people say, I know you, and when they point at you, you're like, bah. You're like, oh, well, how, how, do, how do you think that the media and the public's reaction um, influenced the story and the case? Well, I, I, you got, I gotta tell you, because other women immediately came out and they came onto this station to talk about what happened to them at the hands of Mayor uh, Filner, it really set the tone for how the media handled it and they focused more on Mayor Filner than they did on the women who were coming out and, and talking about their harassment. And Kevin, uh, moving a little bit forward on this, when, uh, the panel discussion is going to talk about this so-called clickbait journalism. How do you define clickbait? Um, before I let this go just for a second, I do want to, I mean, it's sure. really intense what, what somebody like Irene goes through. And this is one of those human sides of this uh, that doesn't get discussed very much, which I thought why Irene's yeah. perspective mm -hmm. is really important to this story is the idea of just how intense this is to have TMZ E chasing you down all the time. Um, and clickbait is, is, is simply journalism designed to get your attention. It's, it's a headline and nothing else that's simply designed to get your attention. And that it is, has a very broad meaning these days in journalism. Well, uh, there is this argument though, tabloid, tabloid TMZ, places like that, um, they actually break some big news, including uh, Junior Seau's death. They were the, the sure. people who broke that. So would it be fair to say that they do add value to delivering news because it's a way consumers wanna see the news? 
Uh, value is a dicey word. Um, there's certainly no doubt, and this is part of the issue, and one of the things we'll be discussing on Thursday night, is this crossover. They cover a lot of the same stories as traditional media. Uh, uh, the, the latest big one that comes to mind is Ferguson, where they were breaking stories about people around the story. So there is certainly an aspect of more news being out there being a good thing, but how they get their stories, the ethics, as you mentioned earlier, how, the ethics of how they approach stories uh, hurts people and it often skews the truth in order to get that headline. Well, I want to let our viewers know that uh, the journalism on the post-Kardashian era panel discussion is tomorrow night at 7 at Point Loma Nazarene University. More information at kpbs.org. Uh, Irene McCormick and Kevin Brass, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.